Avatar The Last Airbender The Burning Earth is an action adventure beat em up and a sequel to Avatar The Last Airbender The Game. The same amount of versions were made as the previous title, with THQ, Studio Australia, working on the flagship console version and Toshi Software on the handheld. However, this time around the PC version was scrapped and never got a sequel. With The Burning Earth coming out just one year after The Last Airbender, it's surprising how different these two games are. There's definitely some overlap, but a lot has been scrapped from the previous entry. This time around, they're sticking to the script. Burning Earth is a direct adaptation of Book 2. It puts you in key points and the original voice cast return, and like, it's a different way of experiencing what you've seen. A lot of the minute to minute character moments are gone. If you're coming off the previous game, you'll be wondering how Zuko went from leading the Fire Nation troop to randomly showing up in the Earth Nation capital as a fugitive. It's definitely a companion piece rather than a standalone piece of media, which the previous game sort of was. Starting off, we're greeted with a recap of the event so far in this puppet show format, which was pretty cool. I mean, just look at Appa. You're dropped straight into a fight against the Earth Nation general trying to trigger the Avatar state. Not combat has been completely overhauled. The RPG stats and gear of varying rarity are gone. The camera is much closer and the game plays more like a hack and slash or a beat em up. You still auto level up and can respect points at any time. Now you have a dodge and a list of combos that do different things. It's no bayonetta but it's more than I was expecting. But when you collect a token you can do a special move which replaces the whirlwind of death from the previous game stopping you from spamming it over and over again. Every character has a ranged attack which can be spammed and it's usually the only way you can deal damage in most boss fights. They're more or less the same just less. Metal and Years. They make you put the dodge to work and then open themselves up for attack. There's a bunch of different playable characters each playing differently. The entire game can be played in multiplayer couch co-op or you can swap to the other character. This sort of means if there's three of you, Katara might just run off this episode and meet back at the end. But you should probably stick to the one character at the start of a level because the AI sucks. Like, it, it, it's pretty bad. I never saw them make a single jump. What this means is that the AI controlled character will have no HP when you swap to them and will drain your HP as the other character. They don't help during combat either other than draw aggro. The health system works sort of like DMC where you find a bunch of health items and once you have 6 it upgrades your health. Healing potions are mapped to the d-pad so you know how to use them. Unlike the previous game where they buried them under a menu with a bunch of useless junk. Outside of combat you'll be platforming and puzzle solving. They got rid of the... <laughs> Now you stay in game for bending, it's usually a button prompt and a direction. You can use these bending points during combat or traversal and they show up less frequently. There's more platforming between levels, rather than run from one end to the other while fighting the same enemy. There's collectibles to find, the puzzles are mainly pushing crates and hitting switches. It's more fleshed out is what I'm saying. So the boss fight against the Earth Kingdom general, we're sort of thrown in without any real tutorial and it's great because that's what happens to Aang, he's caught off guard. This boss fight feels ripped right out of the last game. The dude attacks for quite a bit then goes into hit me mode. It ends with Katara being trapped, forcing Aang into the Avatar state. Rather than being a supercharged version of Aang like the previous game, which I guess would be unfair to poor Player 2 kid, it's just a QTE at the end of a boss fight. This happens every time. The gang head to Omashu to find Bumi, but it's overrun with Fire Nation troops. Aang and Sokka have to find a way in through the sewers, while Katara has to do something. This is a pretty standard sewer level, you solve puzzles and fight some enemies. They try to sort of bring back quests and NPCs, but... Burning Earth is much more linear. There's this crazy guy who's hearing voices. The quest is just jump past these pipes. Easier said than done. It's fine, there's not a lot of these, but they're neither here nor there, they don't really add anything. After helping out the Earth Kingdom resistance fighters with his trademark comedy hijinks, Sokka has to leave and Katara taps in to help Aang find Boomy. They run into the Fire Nation trio and Zuko, eventually finding Boomy. He can't teach Aang earthbending right now. However, there is a boss fight against the governor and wait a minute, Colonel? Oh, this is Aang. The mighty avatar. A lot of boss fights happen on these platforms because of the bonus game mode, turning the boss fight into a smash tournament. The Fire Nation Governor, it's the same boss fight but fire this time. The gang land in this mysterious swamp where you play as Katara and frickin' Momo. Return to Momo mode! Now this is cool because Momo is cool and can do things like crawl through holes and leap horizontal poles. There's this part where you need to navigate some swamp marsh and Momo does this. Meanwhile, Aang and Sock have some busy work. The Fire Nation has polluted the swamp. Gee, it must have been scenic before. They just have to find every oil can and destroy it. Yep, yep, mother f***ers. There's Appa flying sections. If you played the previous game, it unlocks an extra level on the main menu. It's not the worst flying minigame I've ever played. Appa's a bit big and hard to control. I always found myself overshooting the hoops. They make a really satisfying chime every time you go through a consecutive hoop. <laughs> It's 
Ang and Katara for the Swamp Demon boss fight. This one is different, kinda. You wait for it to slam one of its arms down, and then you attack its head. The thing is, the splash damage it does is absurd. It sends you flying across the arena if you're an inch too close. The problem here is the arm is only down for a short while, and he doesn't do the attack very often, so you need to be close enough so you can close the gap while being far away enough that you don't get blasted. What ends up happening is a boss fight that's incredibly long, with neither side being able to kill the other. Welp, off the gale to find an earthbending teacher. The best place to look. Fight Club. This is a boss rush, it reuses the Earth and Firebender boss inside the arena, but these are just regular enemies so you can literally just knock them off the edge with a single combo. At the end of this you finally meet the blind bandit. This is Aang's earthbending teacher, the reigning champion, truly a worthy opponent for the... yep. No, okay. Ang wins and gets a bag full of cash from Tyler Durden, who's more than suspicious as how a kid beat the champion so easily. Ang and Sokka head back to the Beifong residence, but get kidnapped and escape easily and head back to the Beifong residence and, well, yeah, it turns into Metal Gear. Just straight up, it's a forced stealth section where you can't be in a guard's line of sight. It's just an instant game over if you get spotted. Tell you what, uh, it's 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 just fine. The guards are easy enough to sneak by and it ends quickly. Tyler Durden shows up and kidnaps Aang, leaving Sokka and Toph to rescue him. Eh, you've seen this before. There's nothing notable about this, so we'll just move on. Now begins Aang's earthbending training. Now Aang can use three elements at the bending points, but never in combat. It would have been cool for him to randomly switch it up and use all three. The lesson ends with the PvP game mode. You can access this on the main menu and pit whoever won against each other. I mean, I'm by no means a fighting game expert, and this is by no means Tekken. This is kind of fun. I can see arrows of entertainment and tears just from this one game mode. It's really easy to stunlock your opponent and knock them off the edge, which gives characters with quicker attacks an unreal advantage. It's not balanced, but it's a really neat addition. The gang arrive at the library of Wan Chi Tong. Katara and Ang go in one direction while the A-team, Sokka and Momo go in the other. You run around solving puzzles and fighting statues. One that stumped me was the sundial puzzle. I tried relating it to the four elements, then just trying random combinations until I realized the code was outside the puzzle room. This is another puzzle way to swap Aang with Katara to unlock the door, but you can just use Aang because he too can waterbend. Wan Chi Tong flips out and starts sinking the library and chasing you out. <coughs> this was genuinely terrifying. You have a timer counting down and if you're not quick enough, the giant demon owl swan will eat you when you escape. Where's Appa? Appa gets taken by the sandbender. They took him? As a courtesy they don't do Appa Lost Days, we arrive at the Earth Nation capital, bossing Sei via train. Top, we have to stop that guy, but let's be careful up here. The gang need an audience with the king, which anyone can get if they can solve every puzzle outside the throne room. I guess that's fair, there's a match 2 puzzle which took me forever because Toph kept stepping on the wrong piece. Then there's a big orb puzzle and then it's just a big door you're supposed to bust down. Meanwhile, Katara goes on a date with Jet and there's three pumps that need to be turned on. This ends with Aang and Jet breaking into the Dai Li headquarters and Jet dying violently. Now for the best part of the game, firebending baby! You get to play as the banished Prince Zuko and the cooler Daniel, Uncle Iroh. I just love his run, his range attack is lightning, which is a reskin of guitars. It's only for a mission though, afterwards you're back to non-firebenders. They roll up with a massive drill and it's up to Sokka to come up with a plan. It's a lot of short combat encounters and hitting switches until you reach the Donkey Kong bit. This caught me off guard, one last surprise before the end. It's kinda difficult, I got hit more than once. You take out the drill and things get serious. A multi-stage boss fight against the born lucky unbanished Princess Azula. The attacks hit hard and come quicker. Eventually Zuko enters the fight and evens the odds. It becomes an Ornstein and Smao boss fight. Zuko is Zuko. Azula hangs back and starts launching fireballs into the arena. Aang eventually goes into the Avatar state and beats them both. Yeah, no downer ending, Aang just wins. The Earth Nation is saved and the royal family survives. Roll credits. This one's much easier. It's less ambitious and more standard. This came out just one year after the previous game and somehow it's drastically better. The combat is surprisingly good, the game rewards you for using combos rather than button mashing. Dodging is a requirement rather than the optional feature it was in the previous game. They struck a balance with level design not having too much combat or just one traversal mechanic. There's real actual puzzles and okay platforming sections. It doesn't have an original story but it adapts the shows well enough even though it moves at a breakneck pace. As a standalone game, this holds up. The avatar code of pain is a plus. And now that I'm a master waterbender and a master earthbender, I think we'll all be just fine. <laughs> hey, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs>